We're just about 48 hours away from the start of the NHL playoffs. Let's have some fun. You're Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Locked On NHL Power Rankings. I'm Nick Saris, one of the co-hosts of Locked On Flames and the interim host of Locked On Oilers. I'm joined by Hunter Hodes, who, as the host of Locked On Penguins, is probably a little upset, and there's a whole lot to talk about. But before we get to today's show, got to remind you all, today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and as a big fan of Monopoly Go, It's great to see a classic twist on famous Monopoly. So join your friends and download the Monopoly Go app now free on the App Store or Google Play. Hunter, whole lot to talk about. Not nearly enough time for today's show. We are going to try and be as concise as possible. We still don't know exactly who's playing who in the Western Conference. So that segment's going to be a little more open-ended because we're not sure if it's going to be Oilers Kings or Oilers Golden Knights. The Oilers losing last night doesn't impact that, but both Vegas and the Kings play tonight. Thursday night, the night of this recording. So once we have that locked up, we'll have our matchups and our TV schedule finalized probably sometime tonight. So Hunter, let's get on into it. We're starting in the Eastern Conference. The Rangers are the first overall seed in the East. They will be playing the Washington Capitals, who somehow have made the playoffs with a goal differential in the minus 30s. Uh, This is one of the more lopsided matchups I can think of, just because I think Washington has an argument for maybe the worst team I've seen make the playoffs in a long time. I think that might be the worst playoff team I've seen for as long as I have been watching the sport. And that's 20 years at this point. I mean, Nick, I think you can make the argument the 2010 Canadians were really bad. They were kind of carried by Yaroslav Halak, but they still – heated up once they got into the playoffs, but they were still not a good regular season team overall. I think this Capitals team might be worse than that team. And they also just play a style that's not fun to watch. They kind of remind me of the LA Kings of the Western Conference. They trap Nick. That's what they do. I don't think it's a full 1-3-1, but they play, they play a very low event, trappy style just because their roster isn't that good. I said it last week on the show. They have three pretty solid forwards, John Carlson on defense and Charlie Lindgren. And I don't even know where this team would be if Charlie Lindgren wasn't as good as he has been this year. I think the Rangers are a heavy favorite in this series. I expect them to win this series fairly quickly. Hopefully I don't get old takes exposed on that, but I sent you my pick last night. I'm going to go Rangers in five and that one. I know the Rangers haven't been able to go through quick series a lot over the last several years. I do think they get one out of the way here, though. Yeah, completely agreed with you. Uh, This is the deepest Rangers team I can recall in my conscious memory. It's arguably, probably the best Rangers team of my conscious memory. I wasn't alive in 1994. That's really the only other iteration of the Rangers 94 where you could argue it's more talented than this group. Uh, The Rangers have been consistently the best team in the NHL. I think the Rangers win that series in five. Next up. A rematch of a series from last year, the Hurricanes and the Islanders. Depending on which statistical model you look at and which sports book you look at, uh, this is the most lopsided series. Uh, Everybody loves Carolina. The Islanders' only path here is going to be mucking it up and turning these games into 2-1, 3-2 rock fights. And whether or not they go back to uh, Sorokin or they stick with Varlamov, who's gotten, I think, six of the seven starts down the stretch here, I don't think it really matters. I think for the Islanders to win this series, it's going to take more Carolina messing up or not playing well than it is the Islanders actively doing something because they just don't have the horses. Yeah, I mean, I saw how this series went last year when Carolina was pretty good, but this year's Carolina team is better. And Carolina opened up a can of whoop-ass on the Islanders, I felt like, last year. And I think you're going to see something similar this year. Yeah, I know Patrick Waugh is the head coach this time, and the Islanders are playing better heading into the playoffs. But I just think with the firepower that Carolina has, especially now with playoff Jake Gensel, Nick, everyone's going to find out just how good Gensel is in the playoffs, even without Crosby. 
I think he's going to have a massive series for the Hurricanes in this game. I like the Hurricanes to win this in five. I could easily see this going six, but I'm going to go five games this time. I think the Hurricanes are a really bad matchup for the Islanders, especially with the way they forecheck and the way they give you nothing in the defensive zone. Give me Carolina in five in this series. Uh, the Hurricanes have the second best record in the league since the trade deadline. I, I was listening to uh, the Hockey PDO cast, Dimitri's podcast the other day, and they were talking about how Carolina's just kind of gotten to another gear of their volume scoring. And now that they have a bona fide 40 goal guy in Gensel, it's really kind of tied it all together very nicely for them. And the Islanders, I think they're pretty happy just making the playoffs. I, I think that's very clearly what the objective has been. Their idea being, if we get in, anything can happen. Okay, great. Let's see you drag this out with Carolina and see if you can make it a series. Last year, they they weren't particularly competitive, and the Islanders last year were better than the Islanders this year. So, moving right along, next up, we're going to bounce on over to the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division in the Eastern Conference. We're doing it again, Hunter. Bruins Leafs poor at this point I will not be eating the cheese on either of these franchises ever again I have picked the Bruins to come out of the east more times than I can count in the last 10 15 years I have picked the Leafs to win two or three series more times than I can count since Matthews Marner Nylander was established as the core of that team I think the Leafs are a more talented team I think the Bruins are a better team I do not have a strong lean. I can easily see either team winning this series. I When I filled out my picks, I picked the Leafs in seven, but I think this is a coin flip series. That's what I was going to lead off of overall. This is a total coin flip overall. I'm going to go Boston in seven, but I'm not Likely super story. confident in it. <laughs> and I just – I want to see the Leafs do this – before I pick the Leafs to beat the Bruins in a series because I've been hit on that before. I picked the Leafs one of those previous times a few years ago to beat the Bruins in a series. I was wrong. Well, I want to see it to believe it. It's kind of like Caps Penguins from back in the day, right, Nick? I want to see it before I can pick the Capitals to beat the Penguins in a series. And obviously the Caps did beat the Penguins in 2018. The teams haven't played in the playoffs since, but it's similar to, in that regard. Boston center depth, though, really scares me. But if Marshan and Pasternak get going, especially Coyle, they're going to be really hard to stop. And I just like their goaltending in this series. One of Olmark or Swayman is better than what the Leafs have to offer in net. I think that's going to be a key difference for me. And I also like Jim Montgomery as a coach. I think the Bruins are at least going to win this series. After that, getting the winner of Florida versus Tampa – We'll have to see, but I'm going to take Boston in a really, really close of a coin flip series. I think a real, real matchup issue for Toronto in this series is going to be the power play for them, where the Bruins power play is top 10 in the NHL and the Leafs penalty kill is, I want to say, 18th or 19th. And that's really where Boston's done a lot of damage this year. Historically, Boston's been a really good five on five team. By losing Bergeron, losing Krejci, they've kind of had to lean have more heavily on their star players. You mentioned Marshawn and Pasternak. You can throw McAvoy in there as well when they're on the man advantage. That, I think, is going to ultimately determine this series. If the Bruins can score a little bit at five on five and take advantage of the Leafs' weak penalty kill, their goaltending, their bad defense, I think the Bruins can win this series pretty convincingly in all honesty. And real quick, we're going to come up against the wire here. Lightning and the Panthers. I think the Panthers are the better team. I think the Lightning have the better coach. I think the Lightning will make this a series, but I think the Panthers win in six. Very straightforward. The only real path to Tampa Bay winning this is Kucherov going nuclear, which he very well could, but I don't think they have the horses to beat Florida. Well, you did forget one thing in terms of a path for Tampa to win this series, and that's Andre Vasilevsky going God mode. I, I think there's a legit chance that happens just because he is one of the best goaltenders in this league. You're right. Cooper is the better coach. I think Tampa is going to give Florida a really big scare. But in the end, I think Florida is going to win this series in seven games. I do think overall it is close to a coin flip. There is a path to Tampa winning this series. I have said it on this show a lot. I think Tampa is going to give whoever they play in round one a pretty big fight. Kucherov and Stamkos have been great all year. Braden Point, they have the players, especially in the top six, to go up against those Panthers' top players. But can the lack of depth for Tampa – 
step up. I think that's what I'm going to be looking for in this one as well. And also, can they get contributions from blue liners outside of Victor Hedman? That's something I'm going to be looking for as well. But in the end, I think Barkov and Kachuk and company, too much to handle. I'm going to take the Panthers in a really close seven-game series. I'll take Florida in seven. Sounds like a plan, sir. All right, we will be right back. And after this quick break, we will tackle the Western Conference. We've all been there, either as a player when you were a kid or as a fan. It's halftime or it's intermission, and the score is not looking too good. You're feeling low, not sure if you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you got to dig deep, lift your head up and say to yourself, time to get back in this game, pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love on your phone anytime with lots of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboards. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hunter, the West, still not settled. More likely than not, it's going to be Edmonton playing Vegas and L.A. playing Vancouver. But we don't know for sure. So let's start over in the Central where we have a better feel of what's going to start. Number one seed in the Western Conference, the Dallas Stars, will 99.999 be taking on Nashville if everything holds, if I'm right, if I'm reading my notes right. If the Stars play the Kings, it's different, but... Where do you want to start? I believe the Stars actually will be taking on the Los Angeles Kings. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Stars are one and then the Kings are the, the, the Kings yeah. are either third in the Pacific or the second mm-hmm. wild card. You're right, you're right, you're right. So Stars, Kings, come on. You and I have been as b- bullish as humanly possible on the Stars all year and they still haven't gotten the great goaltending. Ottinger's played better, but he only has to be decent for the Stars to be the best team in the league. The Kings are fine. If they were playing a different team, I'd be more inclined to pick them. But we're talking about the best team in the league here. The Kings don't have the horses to keep up with the Stars. I don't think the Stars have an incredible top six. You can make an argument that they are the deepest team, not only in the Western Conference, but in the entire NHL. I have them number two on my power rankings for playoff teams. Yes, for those that want to know, I do have Colorado my number one spot. I am not. Veering away from that just because I am very bullish on the Avs heading into the playoffs. But it's kind of like a 1A, 1B situation. But I think the Stars, with how deep they are, how great their back end is, and how Ottinger can turn it on in the playoffs, we've seen that numerous times before. I think the Stars will win this series pretty comfortably. I'm going to go Stars in five if it is against the LA Kings, which I think we're probably going to get, assuming the standings don't change after tonight. Yeah, um, Vegas is playing... Anaheim and LA is playing Chicago. If Vegas wins outright, they get the third place spot in the Pacific. If they get an overtime loss and LA wins in regulation, LA has more regulation wins. They would finish with the same amount of points. LA would move up into that third spot. If LA loses, it doesn't matter what happens. Vegas would get that third spot no matter what. Speaking of Vegas, we'll t- we'll tackle them and the Oilers right now because that's more likely than not going to be the matchup. I really want to pick Edmonton. I really, really want to pick Edmonton against Vegas purely because Vegas Vegas did it last year. It is really hard. A lot of miles. You don't know what state Mark Stone is going to be in. Aiden Hill has had a nice season, but is he going to be able to do it again? And this is more about feel than actual like 
logic because you look at the rosters and Vegas is a deeper team. That, there's not really an argument there, especially on defense where if everyone's healthy, Vegas' defense blows Edmonton's out of the water. And Aiden Hill has a playoff run where he backstopped the team to a Stanley Cup versus what we've seen from Stuart Skinner last year where it got so bad they were genuine calls to start Jack Campbell. I want to take Edmonton, but Vegas is definitely the better team. I want to take Edmonton as well, but I said going into that series last year, Vegas just matches up so well against Edmonton. The Knights know how to take away McDavid and Drysdale, at least to a degree. You're not going to shut them down all the way, but they know how to take them away to a degree where they can win the series. And that's exactly what you saw last year when Vegas won that series in convincing fashion. I think they're going to get stoned back at some point in the series. He's already been starting to skate and practice with the team. They're as healthy as they can be. I don't know. I don't trust Edmonton's goaltending. Stuart Skinner has been fine, but... Going up against Aiden Hill, who I think is the better goalie, that scares me for the Oilers as well. Again, I know the Oilers have been really good since Knobloch was hired to be their new head coach. But going up against Vegas, especially Bruce Cassidy as the head coach, I like Vegas in this series. I think they're the better team. I think their high-end talent is going to perform a bit better just because Vegas knows how to shut down McDavid and Dreisaitl. I'm going to take Vegas in a very close seven games if that is the series that we get. The key to the series for me is can Edmonton survive in the minutes Evan Bouchard's not on the ice? Because when he is on the ice, they have used him very liberally with McDavid to really tilt the ice in their favor this season. And when he's not on the ice, they just don't have another defenseman capable of driving play to that same level. So bouncing over to the central, Winnipeg, Colorado, I would like them to play best of 13 if we could arrange that. If Gary Bettman, if you're listening, let's do best of third. Let's do best of 15. Those two teams are going to beat the ever loving crap out of each other for two weeks. Colorado's more talented. Their high end guys are better. Uh, if Hellebuck's locked in, good luck. I don't care who wins because whoever wins deserves it. Those two teams are both really good. I could see either of these teams genuinely winning the Stanley Cup. It sucks this is a first-round matchup. I will pick Colorado in seven. I'm also going to go Colorado in seven. I think playoff McKinnon is a completely different beast. He is going to very much show up in this series. I think playoff McCarr is also a different beast. Ranson is going to be there. Not sure about Landeskog overall, but if they go deep, I think he has a chance to come back. I just love that Colorado team overall. Middlestat has been a great fit since the trade deadline. And if they just get the goaltending, average goaltending, this team can win the Stanley Cup yet again. Winnipeg, I know they're a lot better of a team this year compared to last year. I like their lineup more overall. Hellebuck, if he is in God mode, Vesna mode, he might not allow the Jets to lose this series. But this is also a coin flip. I'm going to go Colorado in seven. But yeah, Nick, let's play best of nine, best of 18, best of 20, something like that, where we can get more games than just seven from these two teams. This is going to be one of my favorite series from the first round. I imagine if everything goes the way we think it will, this will be how this series will be held in the same regard we hold the Winnipeg Nashville series from 2018, which, in my opinion, is still the best playoff series of the last 10, 15 years. Last one, Vancouver, Nashville. Nashville's a nice story. They'll definitely win probably two games in this series. But Vancouver's got high expectations here. Vancouver thinks they have the horses to go with anybody, and they do. Their high end talent is as good as anybody's in the West. I think Vancouver wins this series in six games. I think Vancouver very well could be representing the Pacific Division in the conference final against Colorado, Dallas, Winnipeg, whoever survives that. I don't really have a strong I – I would be shocked, shocked if Vancouver fell on its face. That's really the only way I see Nashville going through here. 
I'm going to take Vancouver in six here. You're right. I have been very bullish on the Canucks all season. I think their high-end talent is going to be the difference in this series. I also think Thatcher Demko is going to be a major difference maker in this series. I like how Nashville has played in the second half of the season. I mean, they've been one of the best teams in the league for the last couple of months, but you're going up against a team that has better players in their top six, that has... Quinn Hughes on their back end. I think Quinn Hughes is the best defenseman in the series. No disrespect to Roman Yossi. Yossi had a terrific season. I just think Quinn Hughes is just a bit better this year because I also think he's going to win the Norris. Demko versus Soros, really fun goaltending battle. But I think in terms of this year, I will take Demko over Soros. Give me Vancouver and Six to at least win a round and get the winner of that crazy Vegas Edmonton series. That would be an awesome series in the second round. But yeah, give me Vancouver in six for this one. That would be some heavy metal hockey, Vancouver against Edmonton. Yes. Just no defense, up and down, as many high-end players as can be all over the ice. Uh, and real quick before we get out of here and we start talking about the big picture, the important storylines of the playoffs, I I know it, it similarly to like how every election is the biggest election of all time. It really does feel like the playoffs get better every year because the talent is just getting better every single year. I really can't wait to rot in front of my TV for 20 hours over two straight days. God bless the NHL starting the playoffs on a weekend as opposed to a weekday. So we can go one to one in the morning for two straight days. Cannot wait. And we will be right back and we will talk about the big storylines ahead of the playoffs. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can protect your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk through it. Talk to a team of award winning agents who will walk you through this process every step of the way. Compare quotes from all of the major insurance brokers. Your life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. I want to thank everybody who's been with us every step of the way this regular season for the weekly power ranking show. We will be continuing this throughout the playoffs, which will be fun as we get down to ranking four teams in the round of the conference finals. But that's what makes this fun. We are purely in that hypothetical talk it out stage of the playoffs, the forecasting, the foreshadowing, trying to get a feel for things and understanding of things. My personal favorite storyline and something I love talking about I am just fascinated by the way teams are treating the goaltending position in today's league. And in the context of these playoffs, you look at a team like Colorado or Toronto or Carolina, you look at those teams that are really well constructed forwards defense. They're trying to recreate goaltending in the aggregate. They are trying to make an okay or good goalie great by making their workload lighter. You know, I don't think we'll ever see a day where Carolina is going to pay a goalie eight, nine million dollars a year. Same thing with with Toronto. There are other teams across the league who do this, but haven't been as successful. You know, the Devils did it last year, but it didn't work for them this year. The Leafs have tried doing this for basically the, the entirety of their core. And I just think, I think that is probably the most fiscally responsible way to construct your roster to not sink money into goaltending but then you look at the favorites this year you know colorado georgiev okay that's recreating goaltending you could talk about vancouver who demko has been one of the best the jets hellebuck has been the best dallas ottinger has the ability to be one of the best you bounce back east shesterkin has been great freddie anderson when he's played this year has been really good vasilevsky enough said bob did it last year i am just fascinated to see how goaltending unfolds in these playoffs 
you did miss one there a little bit. Boston, all Mark yeah. Swayman. I'm curious to see who gets the opening nod in that series against Toronto, Nick, because you can go either one. Both have incredible numbers. And based on history, you know, last year, even though the Bruins lost in the first round, they're going to need both goalies if they want to go far. If Omar struggles, you have Swayman right there as insurance, who is probably a number one on over half the teams in this At league. least. Yeah, I would probably up that to two thirds, in my opinion. So I'm really curious to see how Boston navigates that in this series against Toronto, just because, again, they have the edge in goal. You brought up Toronto. Who gets the opening start for this series? You know, Wall, I thought, played pretty solid for them last year in the playoffs. You, know, you had Samsonov in there as well. But, you know, for Boston, which one gets that nod? I think that's a really intriguing storyline as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Boston's in a weird spot because that was an issue for them in that series last year. If you recall, Omark started the series. He was not 100%. And by the time they went to Swayman, the momentum in the series had shifted. It was fundamentally, they felt the series moving away. It was They were losing their grip of control. And by the end of that series, you had a disgruntled Olmark because he had to play hurt more than he probably should have in that series. Swayman was not particularly effective when he was called upon. So that's a really important dichotomy to balance. Number two, this is a storyline I'm directly lifting from that episode of the Hockey PDO cast I listened to. The role of special teams in the playoffs. The conventional wisdom has always been you need to have at least top 15 power play and penalty kill in the regular season to be taken seriously as a contender because that's where you're going to swing the game. Most of the time, the teams you play in the playoffs, they're going to have star players as good, if not better, than your star players. So at five on five, your math is going to be that they're going to cancel each other out, that it's going to be a net zero, and you're going to have to take advantage. You're going to have to score on your man advantages, and you're going to have to prevent them from scoring on theirs. We know Tampa, Florida, the Islanders – I would argue the Jets, you could probably say the Stars, they use that physical, that imposing, that that's an element of their games they need requisite to be successful. But if you're not great on the penalty kill and you take a lot of penalties, you are setting yourselves back. That's the single biggest reason there's a huge gap in that Carolina Islander series. The Islanders have the one of the worst penalty kills in recorded history of the NHL. Right. Like I'm not like not just this year, like since they've been tracking penalty kill stats, which I believe started in 1978. This is one of the worst penalty kills of all time. The other team is scoring 25 percent of the time on the power play when the Islanders are on the kill. You can't survive doing that. It'll be a real short series. So I think that and the one other thing I wanted to highlight, it's shifting. You can get by with a worse penalty kill if your power play is that good. So I'm very curious to see, you know, a team like Tampa that has been extremely reliant on their power play to buoy them during the regular season. Can that be sustained in the playoffs? Especially with how you know how playoff officiating is in the playoffs. Calls tend to go down the deeper you get into playoffs. There's quite a bit of calls, I feel like, in the first round. But once you get to the second round, conference finals, and especially the Stanley Cup final, the refs start not calling as many penalties, excuse me, and they let them play. I mean, that's just how it is, I think, in the playoffs. So once teams get power plays, you really have to make them count. I've always said, one of your special teams units has to be one of your strengths. You can get by with a really sound power play in a mediocre penalty kill but you can't get away with both special teams units being complete crap and for teams that really rely on the power play heading into the playoffs for example the tampa bay lightning i mean they have the best power play i think in the league they're gonna have to make those opportunities count because if that unit goes cold which could happen these are seven game series people small sample sizes happen all the time if that goes away That's not going to be good news for them because Florida is the better team at five on five. And I think the Panthers could really take it to the lightning if they're able to win that matchup special teams wise and kill off a lot of the lightnings um, power plays, excuse me. So you're right. I'm really curious to see how that goes. And I'm also just for storylines sake, how many upsets do we get in the playoffs this year, Nick? It just feels like there's quite a few favorites 
heading into the first round of the playoffs. I feel like we know who the favorite is in all these series. Who's going to be that Cinderella team that we sometimes see go on a run? That's something that I'm really curious to see as well once the playoffs start in a couple of days. I will say there will be three upsets in the first round. I think that's a reasonable number. If you were going to set the line, it would probably be two and a half. I think Toronto can beat Boston. I do think the Lightning can beat Florida. I don't think they will, but I think they can. Um, I think Winnipeg can definitely beat Colorado. I think that's uh, – excuse me, Colorado can beat Winnipeg because somehow Winnipeg has been ahead of Colorado for most of the season. And then the one last storyline I wanted to touch on, the burden of expectation, man. You look around some of these organizations. You look at the Leafs, the Rangers, the Bruins, um, Edmonton, you know – they. I, I wouldn't put Vancouver here. I would say Dallas is probably here. Dallas has an, a window. Their window is a little more open than some of these other teams. But for groups like the Rangers, like Toronto, they know they can't bring their team back as currently constructed. It's as good a shot as you're going to get. The, I, this is the best permutation of the Oilers, of the Rangers. It's not the best permutation of the Leafs. It's one of the better permutations of the Leafs. Can you live up to your expectations? And ultimately, you know, can you have a successful season if you don't win the Stanley Cup, if that's your expectation to be a Stanley Cup contender? You know, are the Leafs going to be happy if they make the conference final? Is that a successful season? No, I mean, I don't think they would. I mean, they're in it to win now. And you said it about the Rangers, man. I think this is the best Rangers team of this era in terms of this core. It's time for them to make a count, Nick. I think yeah. they're not going to get a better shot than this, especially when you look at Peter Laviolette's track record. He always gets the best out of teams when he first gets there. Then it kind of goes downhill, starting in year two a little bit, then especially year three, year four, et cetera. I really want to see what the Rangers are made of once the playoffs start in a couple of days. Carolina. They got really high expectations heading into the playoffs this year. You make that big move at the, de at the deadline, getting Jake Gensel, who's been one of the best performers in the playoffs of the last several years. Is that going to be enough to push you over the top? Everyone's been waiting to see if Carolina can finally break through and get to the cup final. Well, they're going to have their shot. Colorado, they have very high expectations. This is a team that's trying to win their second title in three years, but the path is going to be really hard. I mean, we they may have to go through – Winnipeg and Dallas and heck I probably would think it's likely that they're going to have to go through both of those teams to get to the conference final that's going to be really grueling for them and I think they're going to be pretty gassed once they get to the conference final Vegas can they go back to back I mean they have the talent and the team to do it but going up against Edmonton round one which is very much a coin flip series I'm going to be curious to see with that and then Boston man all about a little bit of redemption for me you get one of the biggest upsets we've seen in quite some time last year. They're up three games to one. That series almost ended in five games. How do they respond this year with a bit weaker of a team? They're weak down the middle. I want to see if this is the year where they can maybe go further than you and I thought they would heading into this season. Low expectations sometimes can help. I, I think there's a real argument that that would – genuinely help the Bruins nobody expects anything from them maybe they luck their way into something crazy but that will just about do it for this week's edition of the Locked on NHL Power Rankings make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts or over on YouTube we'll be here with you every Thursday throughout the playoffs we'll talk to you guys real soon